Welcome to Chapter 7, The Financial Statements. Chapter 7, Essential Outcomes. When you're done, you should be able to create and interpret financial statements for a service proprietorship by identifying accounting concepts and practices related to financial statements, preparing an income statement and analyzing an income statement using component percentages, preparing a balance sheet for a service business, and connecting key terms in the chapter with application. Before we start Chapter 7, let's do a quick review over Chapter 6. In Chapter 6, you learned how to prepare a worksheet. You brought your general ledger account balances over to the trial balance in columns 1 and 2, added them up to make sure your debits equaled your credits. In columns 3 and 4, we do determined how, um, how much um, supplies or insurance um, expired during the month. To find the adjustments, we took the amount on hand or our inventory and subtracted it from the amount in the trial balance. The difference between the two gave us our adjustment. We added up the adjustments to make sure they were in balance as well. Then we extended the accounting equation across to columns 7 and 8, the balance sheet. In columns 5 and 6, our income statement section, we brought across our revenue, which are, is our sales, and our expenses. We added up the columns, took the difference between the two, and determined whether we had a net income or a net loss. Chapter 7-1 Accounting Terminology One of our first accounting um, principles that we will study is adequate, adequate disclosure. Adequate disclosure is a concept that is applied when financial statements contain all information necessary to understand a business's condition. Stakeholders are a little bit different than stockholders. Stakeholders is any person or group of people who will be affected by a business action. Another accounting concept, the matching principle, which we've already studied, it is a concept applied when any revenue earned and the expenses incurred are reported in the same fiscal period. The income statement. The income statement is a financial statement that reports the revenue and expenses that covers a specific period of time. The income statement, since it is a financial statement, is different than the income statement section on a worksheet. Even though you carry all the information over from the income statement section on the worksheet to the income statement, it is the income statement that is the actual financial statement um, that is the official professional document. Component percentage. Component percentage is the percentage relationship between one financial statement item and the total that includes that item. For example, total expenses component percent is when you take the total expenses and divide them by the total sales on the income statement. Net income component percentage is taking the net income and dividing it by the total sales on the income statement. You are now looking at an income statement section on the worksheet. If you notice we have our sales and all of our expenses. So we are looking at the revenue and expense portion of the income statement as well as the net income or the net loss. So looking at columns 5 and 6 we have sales which is our revenue credited and then we have our debits all listed in the debit column. Then we took the difference between our revenue and our expenses and came up with our net income. 
all of this information will be recorded on the actual income statement which is our financial document. So the heading of an income statement first just like the worksheet you will write the name of the company on the first line on the second line you will write the name of the report which is income statement and then the third line you will write four month ended August 31st or whatever the date is and then the year notice that um, all of these are proper nouns so you need to capitalize each of these words Let's now look at how we actually prepare the body of the financial statement for the income statement. The first step is to write the word revenue up against the left wall of the first column, followed by a colon. The second step will be to write our revenue account title, which is sales. In our second dollar amount column, we will write the total for sales, which is $3,565. Fourth, we will write the expenses heading up against the left wall, followed by a colon. Again, make sure you capitalize the first letter of all of these words. Then we will list out all of our expense accounts. We will list them according to how they are listed in the general ledger and on the worksheet. We then write in all of our expense amounts. Since we are going to add up all of the expenses, we are going to draw a single line in the first dollar amount column. Then we will write the word total expenses. Notice that total expenses lines up with the all of the expense account titles. Then we will determine our total expenses by adding them up. And in the second column, dollar amount column, we will write the total. The first column, dollar amount column, is used whenever you have more than one account where you have to figure out a total. The second dollar amount account is always used for totals. We will then draw a single line because we want to find the difference between our net income or find our net income. We want to find the difference between expenses and revenue. Then we will calculate our net income by subtracting total expenses from our total revenue. $1,466 minus the $300,565. We will then write in or record our net income. Then in the first column, we will write in net income, followed by our double lines across both dollar amount columns. Notice you only double rule dollar amount columns. Determining the, compo the component percentages. Sales is equal to 100%. So to find our total expense component percentage, we are going to take total expenses and divide it by total sales. So we will take the $1,466, divide it by our sales, which is $3,565, and we will come up with a component percentage of 41.1%. To determine our net income component percent, we will take net income and divide it by total sales. Our net income was $2,099, so we will take this figure and divide it by our total sales of $3,565. So our net income component percentage is 58.9%. If we take the 41.1% plus the 58.9%, we will find that we have 100% sales.
So looking at our income statement, we can see that we have now set up this income statement. We, our first column is completed with all of our accounts. Our first dollar amount column is completed. Our second dollar amount is completed. And if we look now at the percentage of sales column, we will see that we have recorded 100% across from our total sales. And then across from total expenses, we recorded our component 41.1%. And then our net income percentage component was 58.9%. What do you do if you have an income statement that has two sources of revenue and a net loss? Looking at the diagram, you're going to see that our format still remains the same. The difference will be in our revenue section. We still write the word revenue up against the left wall, and then we will break apart our two revenue accounts and we will indent them. So just like our expenses, we will list each of the sales accounts separately. We have sales dash lesson, and we will write that in the first column, 2,360. We have sales repairs revenue at $1,250. We will draw a single line because we are going to add these two sales accounts together to get our total revenue. So. The first dollar amount column is used whenever you have more than one account where you need to add up and find a total. So if you look at total revenue, our total revenue is in column, the second column, $3,610. Then we list our expenses as we did in the first example when we only had one revenue account. To determine our net loss, we will subtract our total expenses from our total revenue, and in parentheses, we will put $856, showing that we had a net loss. The parentheses always shows that we've had a net loss. So whenever you have a net loss, you're going to put the net loss in parentheses. Notice that when we did our percentage of sales, we put 100% in our revenue, total revenue. In our total expenses, we took $4,466 divided by our total revenue of $3,610, and you will get 123.7%. The difference will be in brackets because we had a net loss of 23.7. Work together. It is now time to do your work together. Please open your accounting book to page 186. You will need work together pages 145 and 146. If you need assistance, please let me know. When you finish 7-1, please return. Congratulations, you have just finished part one. Make sure you have your work checked before moving on to the next PowerPoint.